Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to make a gate drive transformer for various projects that might need it. Now, what we're looking at here is the schematic diagram of how everything's going to be set up. Looks a little bit complicated, but when you break it down to its three main parts, it's really not. Here is an oscillator circuit that's going to produce an AC square wave. There's the transformer itself, and that's connected to an oscilloscope so we can see the output. Now I'll just go into a little bit more detail on this schematic. If you get bored with this, just press that thing there, and that'll skip to the rest of the video. But anyway, this is the schematic of the whole thing. It uses an SG3525 chip. You can also use a KA3525 if you like. They're basically the same chip, so they're both interchangeable. This control here is to set the frequency. I think it goes between 20 and 80 kilohertz. I'll have to check on that. And over here we've got a buffer stage. Now this doesn't amplify the waveform or change it in any way. All it does is just makes it so the chip doesn't have to work so hard. So if the transformer should take up a lot of current, these four transistors will take the strain and the chip won't get damaged. And the more observant of you might notice that there's no capacitor between the output of the oscillator and the transformer. That's because, like I said before, this whole circuit gives AC output, so there is really no need for a capacitor. Anyway, that's enough waffling on about that. So, let's build a couple of gate drive transformers and see how good they work. If you want to build a good gate drive transformer, do not use these kind of cores that come out of computer power supplies because they are absolute pants and they don't work. To show you that, I've got one wired up right now and we're going to monitor the output of that on the scope. So I will turn the power on and as you can see it's absolutely pants waveform. It's completely unusable. It does work a little bit better at the high frequencies but nowhere near usable. Very inefficient energy transfer these things have. And in fact, let me just feel those transistors. Yeah, they are getting pretty warm, so you want to stay away from using these kind of cores. Let's just turn that off before anything burns out. Okay, now what you're looking at here is a filter choke from a switching power supply. This is actually designed for uh, where the mains comes in. But I've got it connected up to the oscilloscope and the little oscillator thing like with the other transformer. So, let's see what kind of a waveform we get from this. Now this is a much better waveform. This is more what you're looking for. Still not entirely usable, but you might be able to see that it's representing the original waveform pretty good. You can see a square edge there and another square edge there. And let's just increase the frequency. Let's see what we have now. As you can see, it's got a fair bit of ringing on it. So it's not exactly perfect, but it's much more, it's transferring that energy much more efficiently. And these transistors, barely warm. Now, this core came out of a microwave oven power board. It was in this little plastic packaging. I simply unwound all the wiring, then took the packaging off, and then wound lots of magnet wire around it. And this core, and this core has proved to be really good. I haven't followed any guidelines or anything, I've just taken about four foot of magnet wire and wound two windings around it, and I will show you how I do that. But as with the previous two tests, I have it connected up to the scope, well, between the scope and the oscillator circuit, so... Let's turn power on to the oscillator and see what we get on the scope. And look at that, it's an almost perfect reproduction of the original square wave. As I turn the frequency up, sorry about the noise outside, I don't know what the hell that is, but... You can see it pretty much keeps up with that pretty good. Sorry, I've kind of lost my train of thought. When it comes to making a gate drive transformer, this is what you've got to aim for. When you've got a good square wave output like we've got here, you'll know you've got a good transformer. And this is transferring the energy really well. If I touch the transistors here, there's absolutely no sign of any heat. 
Now I'm going to show you how to wind your own gate drive transformer. Now I'm going to use the old cheapo method here and use some wire, use the wire off this old solenoid, which I've already stripped down to its bobbin and the wire that's round it. So first I need to get some wire off this. I'm going to use about 12 feet of wire and split that up into three lengths, so we've got three lengths of four feet of wire and that will be the wire that's going to be used for the gate drive transformer. Now if we look closely at my very messy bed you might be able to see that I've got the wire ready for winding. Actually if we take a closer look at the bed post you can see the wire that I'm going to use. We do indeed, we do indeed have three strands of wire as you might be able to see, if the camera would actually focus on the right thing, instead it's focusing on what's behind it. But anyway, these wires have got to be twisted around each other, then they'll be wound onto the ferrite core. So the first step is to twist the wires around each other, and for this I've decided to use a hand drill, excuse the state of it. But anyway, the wire's ready to be twisted, so let's begin. While you're doing this, try to keep the wire as tight as possible or you'll regret it later. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, so we now have a nice length of twisted wire. I've decided to go for about six feet long since that's the, maybe even seven feet since that's the length of the bed. Anything really from four feet onwards should work. Next thing to do is to wind that onto the core. So you take your ferrite core and your twisted three strands of wire and you simply wind it round the core like this. Now this is a very time consuming part so you might want to set some time aside for this. But it's well worth it in the end so you just keep winding it round like this. See there's one turn already and pretty soon you'll end up with something like this. So, let's test this little thing. Wow. Just look at that waveform. It's absolutely perfect. Now let's take a look at the other secondary, see what that's doing. Couldn't be better. So, there we go. A very good performing little gate drive transformer. And because the waveform is almost completely square that's really transferring the energy really well and not wasting any of it the transistors stone cold so the moral of the story is stay away from using these or you will be disappointed